And we're going to look at James chapter 4, starting in verse 1, and I'm just going to kind of break it down, not a lot, but a little bit as we go this morning. Sound good? Yeah. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Have any, has anybody noticed that in the church world and everywhere else that everybody's at each other's throats and everybody has something negative to say about the people around you? Now listen, there is false prophets and false doctrines and we need to preach about those things and I've enlightened a little bit about that to keep people from falling into stuff that would take them away from God instead of to God. But in no way in turn have you ever heard me say something detrimental about somebody, have you? No. Not one time have you ever heard me say something detrimental about an individual because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We wrestle against principality, spiritual wickedness, and high places. I've addressed doctrine. I've addressed theology. I've addressed things that go against the word of God, point blank. But not one time have you heard me say anything about a person, and you never will. But we, we see this thing. They come not against even of your lusts that war in your members. What's he saying here? It's because all you guys are feeding the flesh instead of feeding the spirit man. And you're all trying to try to puff up your flesh, make your flesh man. How many know your flesh wants stuff? As even as Deacon this was talking about. I can promise you if you'll serve God, he'll take care of your stuff. And so you lust and have not, you kill desire to have and cannot obtain, you fight more and you have not because you ask not. You ask and receive not because you ask and miss that you may consume it upon your lust. Now we hear the scripture like you have not because you ask and miss. Well, how did you ask him this? Because you were trying to feed, you were worried about the things of the flesh instead of feeding the things of the spirit. If you would ask the things of the spirit, God would take care of the things that you need. Y'all see that? Yes. You adulterers and adulteresses. How many know that uh, the Bible says if you look upon a woman or a man and lust up in your heart, you've already committed adultery? I'm just giving a claim. That, so. How many know that it, the way the world works today with what's on our TVs, what's people around you, you have to do what I, and listen, I know that we're mixed, but all the kids are downstairs. I know we're men and women up here. Uh, listen, when I taught, I used to teach men's conferences a lot. I would teach men how to do the bounce. Ladies, guess what? You can do the bounce too in your mind. The bounce is when you see something that the enemy's trying to draw you away with, Come on, there's stuff sometimes, you know. Listen, I'll be honest with you. I, no, listen, I'm mad enough for God. I can go to the beach if God sends me and it doesn't cost me to lust or any of those things. But there's a lot of times I just don't want to see all that. Yeah. Amen. And for the record, why, man, I'm on a roll this morning. You know, we don't have that problem here, but men uh, and women, you know, church should be a safe place to go where you don't have to learn to do what I'm about to teach you called the bounce. The bounce is when you see something, you bounce your eyes the opposite direction and look over here instead of meditating on that. Amen. You need to learn to do the bounce. It's your human nature. You have a flesh, man. You need to learn not to feed, not to feed. Come on. Amen. This is things we got to talk about in the body of Christ. Women's the same way. Don't be giving me that. I've been pastor way too long. You know, it maybe it's their personality. So bounce your eyes and mouth and ears someplace else. Because they make you feel good. Come on. Are you hearing me? Yes. And then, so what then will happen, you'll get home later, and then he'll try to re replay that in your mind. And you've got to take authority over that thing, right? Right. Now, is this talking way more about that subject than this? Yes, but guess what? I guess the Holy Ghost wanted to brought up this morning. So here we go. Big smile. So, you got to learn to do the bounce. How many know you got to learn to do the bounce about more things than just lust? Because lust is an uncontrollable desire. And how many know the enemy knows what that thing is that will draw you away? Okay. And it won't always be women or sexual or men or sexual. Come on, it'd be a lot more than that. Yes. It can just be feeling the need to be connected to someone. It could be, it could yeah. be way more than any of those types of things. Y'all with me? It can be, there's people that are, you know, I grew up poor. I swore I would never do without again. And before I finally God delivered me of it, I was a workaholic. Well, some people would say I'm still a workaholic. But I was a workaholic that I paid my home, my cars. I paid everything off before I was a young age because I swore I would never be poor again. And I would work myself into the ground. And the Lord delivered me from that because guess what? None of that made me happy anyways. But pursuing the kingdom of God makes me happy. Amen. 
And I'm still learning a balance, and I can promise you I'm way more balanced now than what I was 25 years ago. I know how to stop and say, hey, kids, let's go to the park. I know how to tell my leaders, hey, you know what, let's just take the day off. We've been going really hard. Everybody go and do something fun. There was a season in my life I couldn't see past that because I was so driven. How many know there's no joy in being that driven? Amen. The Bible says that a man is to labor. He's supposed to work hard. But then the Bible also says he's supposed to enjoy the fruits of his labor. Boy, I'm just all over the place this morning, but it's all tying together. Y'all still yes. with me? Yes. All right. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? And boy, this one causes so much havoc because uh, even when I was coming up as a young minister, I was told, man, you've got to ditch them old guys. You can't hang around. You can't talk to them. Well, they were right. I couldn't be buddy-buddy with my friends up like I once was. But what I also knew is that I also couldn't just toss them to the wayside because if anybody was going to reach them for Christ, it was going to be me. And so what I tell people is until you're strong enough to influence them and them not influence you, Amen. you do need to stay away from them. And even then, you don't need to have the same fellowship. They don't need to be your best friends, but you still need to remain friendly with them so that you can share the gospel with them. But only after you're strong enough to influence them and they're not influencing you. Because friendship with the world is image of God. Why? He, does he, you know, listen, everybody says, well, Jesus ate with publicans. He, he, he went and sat down and ate with the drunkards and he talked with the hookers, you know, come on. And yeah, he did, but guess what? He didn't leave them the same way he found them. He didn't go back week after week and hang out at the bar with them. He brought them up and out of there. That's what God's called us to do. Yeah, right. I, there has been times in my ministry God has sent me into some places, bars, liquor stores. Now they all, they, and guess what? When I went in there, they wanted me out. They said, you're bad for business. <laughs> and I, when I went in there to get somebody, I remember one time I went to the bar to get somebody, the person's face just turned to ash and white. They're like, oh man, <laughs> I'm in trouble now. And I wasn't going to get them in trouble. I just said, come on, get out of here. You know better than that. And you know what? That was the last time they got out got to turn their life around. Amen. And they also realized that God loved them enough to come get them out of the bar. Yeah. And the bar owner said, please don't come back here. <laughs> I had so many people run out the back door and you walked in the front door. <laughs> but how I many know we're not, to, listen, we're not to be friendly. I'm going to go one step further. You should be able to tell a difference between Christians, church folk, and the world. Yeah. If you can't, if you can walk into a church and you, there's no difference between there and going to the social club, it's not a church. Yeah. You know, there's people that 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 come and go here, you know, and, and that, and, and God's still working on them. I'm glad they still come even off and on. The reason why I talk to God, God said, because the anointing's so strong when they come, they get all their junk messed with, and it takes them a while to deal with it, and they could just stay and get it worked on. Come on. Yeah. Amen. But when you come here, because listen, we found a broken James church, I'm going to tell you, I made, I, I, I don't make a lot of deals, but I made a deal with God. I said, I don't want some church people can just sit and sit in. If they come here, I want the anointing to be strong enough that they get dealt with. But guess what? I get dealt with too when I come here. If my heart ain't right, guess what? I get dealt with. Don't be thinking it's just you. That's what the anointing does. Well, I'm all over the place, but are y'all getting something? But it, listen, we're living in the last days. It could be a thousand years or he could come tomorrow. Our job is to occupy until he comes, right? And I'm about to get to today's message. This is all free. But the enemy is waging, is waging a war to wear out the saints in many different ways. He's bringing things. Remember, I've been preaching on this. And you have to learn to adapt and overcome. But these are things not everybody here is dealing with, but these are things we have to get taken care of before we're able to stand on the word. Because if we don't have these things taken care of, the enemy uses those things to knock our legs out from underneath us while we're trying to stand on the word. Y'all still with me? Yes. 
Do you think the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lost us to envy? Listen. We're spiritual beings in a fleshly body. But greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Stop saying that your flesh is greater than, than Jesus. Well, I can't control it. That's because you've been feeding too much. Change what you're feeding. Amen. Come on. But I love this part. Wherefore he says, God resist us the proud. Everybody usually takes that as a backhand. Yeah. If you're too proud, God says in your weakness, his strength is made perfect. Can I get a little more volume? I'm having a really good day. In your weakness, his strength is made perfect. So, yeah, if you're too proud to admit you need help with your flesh, God will just let you see how high your pain level is. Come on, I'm preaching this morning. But when you have humble enough to say, I need help, God gives grace, unmerited favor. He, 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 he helps you come up and out of that thing. Come on. He gives you supernatural. He puts a super to your natural and helps you come up out of that thing that you couldn't come up out of yourself. You hear me this morning? Yeah. But that's to the humble, the one that says, guess what? I need help. Ain't that good news? Yes. Usually everybody gets hung up on the proud part. Oh, he resists the proud. You usually say it to somebody that's proud and they're being proud themselves, proudly telling that person they're too proud. <laughs> Ain't no love in it. Big smile. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. How many have found, when you submit to someone, do you get to determine the conditions of your surrender usually? No. Now how come everybody comes to God trying to determine their conditions of surrender? Instead of just saying, I'm all yours, God. Amen. I'm all yours. Listen, it's the best thing you can do. If you want, if you listen, if you don't like joy and you don't like peace, then don't listen to me no more. <laughs> just stop right now. If you've got something against joy and peace in your life, just stop listening. How many like joy and peace? Come on, I'm being real. Funny, but real. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil. And I know I've been saying this for a long time, and I've spoke a little bit on the last few weeks here and there, because some people have heard me say I'm resisting, and they didn't just know that I taught them this in depth throughout the years, how many know that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy? John 10, 10. But the rest of that verse says, I've come, you may have life and have it more abundantly. If you don't know, that's Zoe life, that's an abundant joy, peace-filled, happy, happy, happy kind of life. Come on. Boy, I could just about get up. Somebody tell on me. But I'm getting better. About two months of working out in, I'm getting better. Still overcoming some things, but so resist the devil and just keep resisting, it'll be okay. Is that what it says? It says he will flee from you. Now here's the thing that broke my heart. I realized the enemy was an idiot and he will show back up eventually. But just because the postman puts a bomb in your mailbox, does that mean you gotta open it and take it? No. No. You can put return to sender right on that package, right? So just because the enemy's bringing sickness, addictions, offenses, whatever that may be, doesn't mean you've got to open the mailbox and cuddle with it. <laughs> you need to resist it and return it to the sender. Now, does that mean that, listen, he can bring it. If we don't. If we, we see all throughout the Bible where sickness actually showed up. Not once was anybody immune to it. Even the even Peter's mother and all had it right there ministering to Jesus Christ himself. And he spoke and healed her because the enemy brought it. But he didn't get to stay. Because Amen. Amen. God says he's given us authority over it. He said that healing is the children's bread. Amen. 
Someone said, what about Sister Joyce? She is completely healed now, dancing in heaven. Amen. This body of mine, I'm believing for a complete restoration right here, but there's no doubt in my mind between here and heaven, I'm going to have some dancing legs again. Amen. But I'm believing for here, and I will not settle until then. I will do my job of resisting what the enemy is sending. Yes. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. Because that changes your mindset, which gets your mind right for the fight. I'm preaching now. Amen. You're going to have to get your mind right to fight the good fight of faith. Come on. You're going to have to get up and look the man in the mirror and quote the scripture. Whatever it is you're overcoming and start putting it into balance. <laughs> Resist the devil and he will flee. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Did it say he might draw nigh to you? It said he will. Period. When we chase after God, we always get to catch him. Amen. He wants you to. And this is for the ones that maybe haven't done it right. He says, and everybody usually uses this one to beat people up, but we're not doing that today. It says, cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Did he say, oh, it's too late for you? The devil's going to catch you? He said, no, if you want to resist him, then you're going to have to get washed in the blood. You get washed in the blood, then you resist the devil, and he flees. It takes just about that long. Isn't that good news? Yes. He said, and purify your heart, you double-minded. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. What's a double-minded man? It's when you know what the Word of God says, but the enemy has waged a war on your mind to get you to, to, to dance in unbelief and things that are counter to the Word of God. And you need to stand in faith and say, Lord, purify my heart. Lord, wash me clean from all of this stuff. Listen, there was a man that came to Jesus himself and said, Lord, help thou my unbelief. And when he said that, God said, Lord, Lord, touch him right now. Listen, it takes a lot of faith to ask God to help your unbelief. <laughs> but when you do that, God purifies you. And all of a sudden, Something starts rising up in you and you're able to resist the devil and say, shut up, stupid. Yeah. I'm fighting a good fight of faith. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises it against me, I shall condemn. That is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Yeah. Listen, there is nothing too big, too hard for God, but you got to get your head right. You can't fight this thing from the sidelines. We're way past that. We're living in the last days when the harvest is coming in, when souls are on the line, and the enemy is trying to consume you with you and all of you and all of your stuff. And when you get your mind on God's stuff, he takes care of your stuff. Yes. And you're able to start resisting. Yes. And you're able to start pushing back. That's what fight means. I'm going to push back. Amen. I'm not going to sit here and take it. Come on. Listen, the prodigal son was wallowing in the pig pen. There's some watching online. They were wallowing in the pig pen. And then there was no pushback. One day he woke up, he came to his right mind. He said, What am I doing here? The servants in my father's house get treated better than this. I'm going home. I'm pushing back. I'm going home. And when that prodigal son came home, the father said, Woo! Let's have a party. Come on. Come on. You got to fight the good fight of faith. Amen. I can't fight it all for you. I can encourage you. I can give you. I can give you some bullets from time to time from the Word of God, but you got to rise up and say, man, I'm going to fight. Yes. Are you all about ready to start today's message? I got, I got 20 minutes. I got about four days from Pastor Tammy if I see that. <laughs> I 
My help comes from the Lord. <laughs> That's what I'm depending on. On your page, there's no notes here. These are just scriptures. The reason why they're just scriptures is because we're just going to go, go over them this morning, but I want you to take these home with you. These are bullets to load your gun with. These are bullets to load your faith gun with. For whatever that thing you're overcoming. For whatever thing you're fighting. These are promises from God. Promises of God are yes and amen. They're not maybe coulda, shoulda, woulda. But only you can make up your mind. What you believe. And if you got some unbelief, man, go to God and say, Lord, help my unbelief. Ain't nobody beating on you this morning. Just say, Lord, help my unbelief. And he'll come in. See, some of you are doing it right now. You just don't want nobody to know. It's okay. Nobody needs to know. And you can feel God ministering to you. Yes. Psalms 121, verse 1. I looked up my eyes unto the hills where from whence cometh my help. Who's, who's in the hills? Who was up on the hill? Lord. Jesus Christ. That is where our help comes from. Come on. Whenever you're in trouble, you need to lift your eyes up unto the hills will come with your help, Jesus Christ. My help cometh from, in case you didn't know, he'll just go ahead and tell you in case you didn't want somebody to be mistaken. My help cometh from what? The Lord. The Lord. Which made heaven and earth. Now let's just stop. Sometimes we read scripture so much as Christians, we just blast past this stuff. My help cometh from the Lord that made heaven and earth. Okay, yeah, I've heard that many times, Pastor. Wait a minute. My help comes from the guy that made the whole universe and the world and all the stuff I'm standing on. The one that made all of that is my helper. My helper. That's who helps me when I need help. Amen. Now, what could be too hard for the guy that made all of that? Right. But what does the enemy try to tell you is too hard for him? Everything. But just think about that. <laughs> My help cometh from the Lord who made the heaven and the earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. When you're in a fight, where you place your feet matter. Mm -hmm. Am I telling the truth, Sister Scott? Yeah. Foot placement's huge. And whenever you whenever you get tired and it's time to take a stand, there's a stance you can go into that you plant your feet so you will not be moved. And God says, all right, when you, then there's a scripture, the Bible says, when you've done all you can do, stand. Sometimes in a fight, when you're resisting, you get to the point where you're just standing. But standing is never just a, a negative thing. It's a place where he says, I will cause your foot not to be moved. But you will stay right where your foot is planted in faith. Isn't that good news this morning? Yes. And he that keepeth thee will not slumber. That Listen, I still remember the Lord brought this scripture in my spirit for today. And I still remember the first time I got a hold of this. It rocked my world for a very long time. And guess what? It rocked it again today when God was bring, stirring some stuff up. Just think, when you, you go to bed, if you get some helpers, they go to sleep sometimes. You got bodyguards, everybody gets tired. Somebody could go to sleep on that watch that's watching over you. But this guy never even sleeps. He's working for you 24-7. While you're asleep, when you, your faith is working ahead of you. The Bible says the word of God is framed, though your world is framed by the word of God that you speak. And as you speak out these promises of God that framed your world, the word is working ahead of you even while you sleep. Because God's not going to sleep on his watch. Ain't that good news? Oh, but you don't know what I'm facing, Pastor. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I do know. Who cares at this point in time? God knows, and he's not sleeping on the watch. Amen. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. He's not going to sleep on the job. 
while you're while you're sleeping, he's working. Come on, some of you need to get a hold of that. While you're sleeping, he's working. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. Now, we're talking about sun and day and all that stuff. There's an eclipse tomorrow, in case you didn't know, the whole world's went crazy. <laughs> Go and watch it if you want. Don't watch it if you don't want. I don't care what you do with it. It is a sign that the end times are coming. It's not the sign. No one knows the day or the hour of Jesus is coming back. If they tell you he's coming back on a certain day, you can be guaranteed it won't be that day. Nobody knows the day. But it is a sign. The Bible says there's wars, there's rumors of wars. It talks about the moons. It talks about all these signs we had. They're all lining up. We need to be ready. Amen. You know, we need to prepare some things for these last days. Maybe we need to go plant Brother Don's garden and we can all munch on it. Um, <laughs> but uh, where's this stuff coming from? <laughs> the Lord shall preserve thee from some evil. Is that what it says? No. no. What's it say? All. All evil, and he shall preserve thy soul. Last time I checked in the Hebrew, deep into all the languages, all still means all. I know that's deep, right? But all still means all. Evil's, guess what? Evil. And all evil means he's got you. Period. End of story. <laughs> the Lord shall preserve thee going out and thy coming in from this time forth. So he's talking to them. Now listen. That means that we shouldn't be afraid of going out and about the highways and the byways and having a good time telling people about Jesus because God says, wherever you go, I'm going with you. Matthew 28, Mark 16. So he's going with you. But I love the next part that I highlighted there for you. And it says, even forevermore, because some people want to say, well, that was for then. What about now? Well, guess what? Forevermore still means forevermore. So all of this stuff is for you and me. Y'all still with me? I got 15 minutes. I'm going fast. <laughs> The next one's a different translation of the same verse. I broke it down real fast. I look to the hills. Where will I find help? It comes from the Lord. The Lord is your protector. He won't sleep or slumber. The protector of Israel doesn't doze or ever get drowsy. I mean, you know, he's not going to get caught sleeping on the job. Some of you are like, okay, we're getting it, but I want, I'm trying to move it right now. 18 inches from your head to your heart. Because if you'll get this in your heart, you're going to walk out of here different than you came in today. Amen. Y'all with me? Yes. The Lord is your protector there at your right side to shade you from the sun. You won't be harmed by the sun during the day, by the moon at night. The Lord will protect you and keep you from all Danger. The Lord will protect you now and always, wherever you go. He's going to what? Protect you. All you've got to do is stay right with Him, stay connected to the vine. That's it. Pretty good deal if you can ask me. First Peter 5 7. First Peter 5 7. Another bullet for you this morning. Casting all the things you can't fix. Is that what it says? All your cares. How many know that cares can weigh a lot? Does it listen? A lot of these scriptures I'm going to quote. Some of you've heard for years, but listen, what are we doing? We're moving them 18 inches. We're trying to load your gun this morning. Okay. Can you change one hair on your head by worrying? No, no. Can you change your gray hair back to black hair by <laughs> thinking about it? No. I can't even grow more hair if I want to think about it. 
maybe in some places, but not in all places. But when I cast all my care upon him, a lot of people say, well, I've done that. But what I've seen as pastor throughout the years, people cast it and they pick it right back up. Yes. They cast it yeah. and then they go and pick it right back up. They cast it and then they pick it right back up. Mm -hmm. If you want to get the weight off, you're going to have to leave it on his shoulders and not yours and believe that he's taking care of all evil. Right. Amen. Come on, are you with me? you got to believe those promises, those Come on, James, James 4, you got uh, Psalms 121, and then when you do those, it makes you be able to actually utilize 1 Peter 5, 7. Mm -hmm. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. How many believe, listen, the last part, see, how many know it, it's easy to believe Jesus cares for you? He cares about the things that matter to you. Right? He loves you, right? And so, if you'll cast your care upon him, he's going to take care of you. What's another verse for that? Uh, well, we're going to go in down some of these already. Let's see. Be sober, be vigilant. How many know be sober in today's world has a whole new meaning? That means keep your head right. Come on. Now get your head right. I could illuminate on that, but it'd take a lot more. You got to get your head right. Can't be, for one, you can't have alcohol, can't have drugs, can't have none of that stuff. But you also can't have all the other stuff that's in there. You've got to be sober. You've got to have the mind of Christ. Get your head right. Be vigilant. Keep your head right. Because your adversary, the devil, now I highlighted that as there. Anybody see it? He's not a roaring lion. He's walking around trying to act like one. He's only got the power you let him have. He can't do anything unless you give him permission. Unless you receive what he's sending. Do you see what I'm saying? Seeking whom he may devour. He wants to devour you. He wants to destroy you. There is no doubt about that. And he's got real weapons, but he, they're only allowed against a child of God when we receive them. Someone said, well, you're dealing with all kinds of stuff. I am, but I'm still not receiving them. And someday, someone said, well, I need some more. Well, Job, there were several others in the Bible, uh, you know, that uh, Paul had an affliction that he had thorn in his side. Uh, someday, it will all cease. And for the record, I've not had the same. I, I've had a, an infection for the record, and I've had all this different stuff come try to kill me, but God will heal up one part, and the enemy will attack another yes. part. It's changed several times over the years. Uh, we we cancel him one spot, he brings another spot. But guess what? He's going to be canceled. I get to win. Amen. Why am I talking about me? Because you know what the enemy say. Well, how do you expect God to help you with yours when pastors dealing with stuff? That's when you say, "Shut up, stupid." Yeah. Uh, he's resistant. I'm resistant. We're not taking your trash. Yeah. Amen. 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 So, key verse. You know, you got to find this stuff more in one place. I'm going to like thinking I'm making up a doctrine out of nowhere. First, First Peter 5, 9. Whom resist. Resist means you're not receiving steadfast in the faith. That means you've got to resist steadfast. Fight the good fight. Get your head right. I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ. Go back to the pits of hell where you belong. You have no authority here. By the way, if you, you're here pressing somebody under the sound of my voice this morning, I rebuke you and command that thing to break right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Huh. Somebody just got free. <laughs> Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Now, I want to bring this here. I was just talking about this. It never gets talked about. It always gets glazed over. We're resisting, right? We're fighting the good fight of faith. That means the enemy's bringing this trash. But everybody tells you the church, well, if you've got resisting something, must be something wrong with you. Yes, there's times that sin brings it. We dealt with that already. You already took great care of it. Now we're all moving on to the same healing scriptures. And a lot, most of the time there ain't nobody because he's talking about the brethren here. People that the enemy's just attacking. All right? So they're all, there's more than people all over the world dealing with this stuff. It ain't just you. Although anything wants to make you feel like it's just you. 
big smile. Come on, are you hearing me this morning? So break out of that small mindset. Get your head right. Get your fight, head back in the fight, and resist. You with me? Yes. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, so after you have suffered a while, how long is a while? I don't know. How long it takes stupid to get lost. Yeah. But here is the thing. He says, shall make you perfect. perfect. And establish you. And strengthen you. And settle you. The end is always the same if you stay in Christ. Isn't that good news this morning? Yeah. Anybody get some revelation? Yeah. Get encouraged? I, I, I pray there's warriors leave this house today. Amen. Ready to fight the good fight of faith. Got some bullets armed. Say, man, I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. He's going to strengthen me, establish me. To him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. 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 Glory. Come to me. And I will help you when you are just a mess. <laughs> so come to me and I will give you rest. Listen, fight the good fight of faith. Come to me and I will give you rest. Uh, how many in here don't raise your hand is that when you get weary, does the enemy make you feel like a loser? Don't raise your hand. I'm just giving you a moment to be honest with yourself. When you get weary, the enemy has a, does a perfect job of making you feel like an absolute loser. I have come as your pastor this morning to tell you that's a lie from the pits of hell. But you do know what need to you do need to learn where to go when you feel that way, and you do need to go, learn to go and get rid of that yoke. We all feel that way from time to time. But we got to remember where to go unload that stuff at. Which reminds me, for those that I'm not going to give a big thing in the middle of my message today, but we are making a prayer garden back over here. It's going to have, it already has a bench to sit. And there'll be more coming on that. Uh, but it's behind the dumpster, so you can go get rid of your junk. <laughs> True story. And it'll be open. 24-7. You can come whenever you want. Sit on the parking lot. Sit back there and pray. We're going to anoint it. But uh, got to know when to go get rid of it, huh? At that time, Jesus answered, said, I thank thee, O, o Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and bread, and revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and two serve the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, all ye that labor. Now here's the key. Remember we started in James 4? We talked about getting right with God and not serving the flesh, but serving God. Some people come with labored and wore out because they keep trying to make their flesh happy and they wonder why they don't find rest. Come on, I'm preaching now. This is for those that are laboring for the Lord. And if you're not finding the kind of rest you need, you got maybe need to look and see what's causing you to labor so much. Are you hearing my heart this morning? Yes. Come unto me, all of you that labor and you are heavy laden, and I will think about giving you rest. <laughs> I will do it on that one day of the year. No, he just says, I will give you rest. No matter if you're at work, it don't matter if you're at the job, you're in the car, you're at the prayer garden dumping your stuff, you know. It don't matter where you are. Lord, I'm feeling tired and weary. I've been pushing on for you. You said you would give me rest. Lord, come and minister to me. Oh, it's done. Now the key is to leave it there, right? right? 
Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. How do you know if you have the right things? Because you need to study to show yourself approved. That's a good time for me to say, I hope your Bible reading is going well. If not, now's a good time to start catching back up. Big smile. We do it every year. We'll get you eventually. There's never a time that you have enough word. You need to learn of him every, every day. You need to push in every day. Because if you don't know the word, the word can't help you. Learn of me. So that's how you know if you got the right yoke, because you're learning of it. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Glory. How many are ready to unload some stuff this morning? Ready just to Say, Lord, I've been carrying this too long. I'm ready to get rid of it. I'm going to give you an opportunity before we get done here today. Look, I got three minutes and I'm getting close. It is a miracle. Amen. This one here is something we've done from time to time. This is Aaron's blessing. But I want you to realize this is what God is speaking over you, and I'm gonna I'm gonna read it all, then I'm gonna bless you with it. And I don't have time this morning to teach you the difference, but there's a difference between blessing something and praying over something. Right. And uh, I taught it years ago. I don't remember when. What happens? Uh, Fifteen years now, I've been pastor of Broken Chains Church. Amen. Isn't that crazy? And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron, speak unto his son, saying, On this wise you shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them. How I many know if you've got to confess to be saved, then our voice is powerful upon the earth. Amen. How did God create the earth? He spoke it into existence. So the, then he goes on and said, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. How many believes the Lord wants to bless you and keep you? He said, Lord, make his face shine upon thee. And we're going to see down here. I like it where it says, Lord, smile upon me. Amen. How many don't think it's a good thing when God smiles on you? Yeah. Man, I'm happy with that kid. Lord, you know, when somebody, when you're smiling on somebody, you know, you, you like, yeah, that's fine. You're doing good. I think I want to do something special for him. And be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them. Let's look at this other translation right below. The Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron and his sons that when they bless the Israelites, this is what they would say. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord smile down on you and show you his kindness. May the Lord answer your prayers and give you peace. And this way Aaron and his sons will use my name to give a blessing to the Israelites. And I will bless them. How many believe God will bless you?